Okay, we're doing pretty good. This is the last video in the series for today. So uh, let's do this thing and see see how we're doing, see how we're holding up here. Um, let's get a little farther into this. So David Foster Wallace says, um, he says, a blunter way to say this is, if the, that, is that the lobster acts as if it's in terrible pain, causing some cooks to leave the kitchen altogether and to take one of those little lightweight plastic oven timers with them into another room and wait until the whole process is over. So a lot of cooks don't like to hear the lobster struggling inside the pot of boiling water, trying to get the lid off, clawing at the sides. So they just leave the room and they wait until it's definitely dead because they don't want to be in there hearing a living creature scraping the sides of the thing. And again, why is David Foster Wallace talking about lobsters? The lesson here is... He, it's not to educate you about lobsters, even though there's a lot of information. You may feel like this is, he's teaching us a lot about lobsters. It's not the lobsters. He's teaching this for lobsters are just an example. Remember how I say guys put examples? Lobsters are his example animal. But his larger question is, why do you feel it is okay to hurt animals in order to eat them in the first place? And lobsters are a dramatic example because they're one of the very few animals that, that, that people kill um, in their own home. Um, whereas most people don't kill a cow. You can't bring a cow into a New York City apartment and slit its throat uh, and cut it to pieces. Okay, so let's get a little farther into this today. Next paragraph. There happen to be two main criteria, um, the sort of standards. Criteria is like a standard. Um, there happen to be two main criteria that most ethicists agree on for determining whether a living creature has capacity to suffer and so has a genuine interest that it may or may not be cons our moral duty to consider. So, so, so there's sort of two reasons why people who care about ethics will say, um, will, will determine whether something's suffering. Um, he drops down, he's got another footnote, David Foster Wallace loves footnotes. He says, interests again basically means a strong and legitimate preferences, which obviously require uh, some degree of consciousness, responsiveness to stimuli, etc. See, for instance, the utilitarian philosopher Peter Singer, whose 1974 animal, animal liberation is more or less the Bible of the model, modern animal rights movement. He says it would be nonsense to say it was not in the it would be nonsense to say it was not in the interests of a stone to be kicked along the road by a schoolboy. A stone does not have interests because it cannot suffer. Nothing that we do to it could possibly make any difference to a welfare. A mouse, on the other hand, does have an interest in not being kicked down the road because it will suffer if it is. So he's talking about the, he's talking about the kind of ways that ethic, people who study ethics um, figure, think about um, the interests of a creature, right? Um, and I think the idea, right, the idea is that a stone, a rock doesn't care if you kick it, but a mouse does care if you kick it. That's pretty obvious, right? The, my, the a mouse suffers if you kick it, if you step on it, um, but a rock doesn't suffer. He's talking about the kinds of uh, examples that, that, that uh, he says you have, to, you have to, you have to be, he said one, one of the ways we tell if pain matters is, is the animal conscious? Is it aware of what's happening? Um, the mouse is, pro is aware of getting stepped on, um, but the rock is not aware. He says responsiveness to stimuli, meaning if you do something to the mouse, it will react. But a rock, if you step on a rock, it doesn't react, it doesn't change in any way. Whereas if you step on a mouse, it'll make a noise and struggle and try to get away. And, you know, um, So he's talking about the ways that sort of people who study ethics uh, look at these things. So he says... Um, he says, there happen to be two main criteria, there's two main things that most ethicists agree on for determining whether a living creature has the capacity to suffer. Um, and if they can suffer, that tells you whether they have a genuine interest that may or might, may not may or may not be our moral duty to consider. So it's, it's really, how do you tell if animals actually care? And then if they care, should that matter to you or not? Because you could say, animals don't feel pain. Or you could say, animals do feel pain, but I don't care. Um, one, uh, one of those is an epistemology question. How do you know if they feel pain or not? The other one is a value theory question. Um, do you animals feel pain, but do you value it? Do you care about their pain? Or are you just like, yeah, I don't care about that. That's not important to me. Um, okay. Um, he says one, one of the criteria people use is how much the neurological hardware, that's kind of like your brain, how much neurological hardware required for um, pain experience the animal comes equipped with. No receptors, prostaglandins, neuronal opioid receptors, etc. So he's talking about brain science shit. Um, so one way that we determine animals' pain is to just look at their brains and, and how many of these kinds of receptors, how many of these, these are things that human beings have to determine pain. They're science terms. And, and you know, cows and pigs have more of these and shrimp have less of them. 
The other criterion, I mean, the other thing we use to figure out uh, animal pain, is whether the animal demonstrates behavior associated with pain. And it takes a lot of intellectual gymnastics and behaviorist hair splitting not to see the struggling, thrashing, and lid clattering as just such pain behavior. Um, intellectual gymnastics means you got to have a lot of crazy reasons to be like, well, the lobster's not really in pain. It's just clawing at the lid of the thing for some other reason. Behaviorist hair splitting. Hair splitting is like... Um, um, making a lot of really technical, it's, it's, it means absurd. It's absurd things. You got to have a bunch, intellectual gymnastics and behaviorist hair splitting mean the same thing here, which is that they're just absurd. You got to come up with some pretty crazy reasons. If you hear the lobster struggling in the pot of boiling water, it's pretty obviously in pain. And you would have to come up with a, lo a crazy explanation if you're like, oh, the lobster's not in pain, and then I say to you, oh, really? Because it doesn't want to go in the boiling water. It's trying to get the lid off, and it's scraping at the sides of the pot. If it's not in pain, why is it doing those things? He says, it, to answer that question, that it's, that, that it's doing it for a reason that has nothing to do with pain, is going to involve intellectual gymnastics. It's going to involve... Um, behaviorist hair splitting. Behaviorists are people who only care about what an animal does and not what it thinks. Um, it's going to require crazy explanations. Uh, it's the obvious explanation is the reason it is clawing at the lid is because it's in pain. And if you have other explanations, they're going to be pretty insane, um, says David Foster Wallace. He says, um, according to marine, um, according to marine zoologists, it usually takes lobsters between 35 and 45 seconds to die in boiling water. Um, no source I could find talks about how long it takes them to die in superheated steam. One rather hopes it's faster. Um, so he's ta he's talking about the, the science stuff. But he says, listen, you could people could come up with all kinds of crazy reasons why the lobster is struggling, and they'd be like, well, it doesn't really feel pain; it's just doing that automatically. Um, and there's all kinds of ridiculous things people would say, says, but just look at the thing. Obviously, he says, it's in pain. Um, and so he wants to kind of think about these things. It, this is a, it's a very uncomfortable thing to sort of talk about, um, but it, it's, it, I think it is important. Um, one of the things we're trying to do here in this class is to really think about the world that we live in. Most people, um, they walk around the world that they live in, but they don't think about it too much. They just do whatever they used to do, and whatever they think is okay, they just do it. Um, what we're trying to do here in a class like this is to think, to really think about the world that we live in. Um, for example, most people just think, uh, you know, books are okay. Speaking is okay. But Socrates says, well, wait a minute, are books okay? Let's actually think about this for a second. David Foster Wallace, or, or love, what is, what is, people just like, yeah, I'm in love, I'm not in love, but they don't think about what it is. Socrates demands that you think about what it is. And David Foster Wallace here, people go to the store, they buy meat, they don't think about it too much. And David Foster Wallace says, well, let's stop for a second and really think about what the hell is going on uh, when we do these things. Okay. I'm kind of tempted to stop now. Let's go a little further. No, you know what? That's a good stopping point. Okay, so uh, just, uh, you know, work on your papers, think about this stuff. For David Foster Wallace, just, you know, take notes, underline things that are important, ask questions. Um, it would really be helpful to me if you guys would make some comments in the blog um, so that I could bother you, because you you might tell me, I think it's totally, if you eat meat, um, have you ever thought about why or whether it's okay? Um, think about it now. <laughs> Now's the time. This is the moment. Um, one of the things that makes college interesting is that in college, you'll meet people like me and like the other students who will say, listen, you eat meat, but do you ever really think about whether that's okay? Um, once you get out of college, no one will ask you this again. Most people will just be like, oh, we're going to a restaurant. We're going to eat this food and people don't think about it. This is the chance in your life to actually think about these questions. Most people never think about it. They're just like, I eat meat because my family eats meat. And I just grew up with meat, and it's fine. Um, and David Foster Wallace says, is it actually fine? Seriously, think about this, because there are some fucked up things about eating meat, because you are causing pain. And if you are caught, if you are choosing to cause pain and cruelty when you don't have to, why do you think that's okay? Now, I realize that sounds like I'm just insulting you, um, but it's not supposed to be an insult. It's a real question, and I want you to really think about it. Uh, and I will see you guys... Uh, well, I guess day after tomorrow, I'll make another video and uh, we'll talk about it more. You guys are amazing. Everybody stay safe and alive. You're the best.